Hi, I'm Randy Elstra. Nature. Just look around. Isn't it beautiful? There's something very special about being in an environment in which nothing around you was made by the hands of men. The trees, the grass, the birds that are chirping, the insects, the swamp. It can be breathtaking. But don't get too comfortable because it can also be quite deadly as well. Have you ever wondered how did the natural world come about? Well, there are actually six different creation stories, if you will, that are accepted by our modern society. It starts with the six-day creation model in which there was a hands-on creator who was very intimately involved with every aspect of his creation, and he did it very quickly. And it goes all the way back to atheistic evolution creation model in which there was no creator and just vast spans of time in which random accidents occurred that brought about everything that we see around us. Well, if you were to poll the whole world, what you would find is that 90 plus percent of the world believes one of these six different creation stories. But here's the deal. Five of these six different creation stories presents a picture of a very hostile world that is driven by fear, death, struggle, and violence. And that is our world, no doubt. And it was into that world that the human race was introduced. Now that doesn't sound very kind to me. On the other hand, there's one creation model that presents a kind creator, a creator who made a pristine and innocent world, a beautiful and benevolent world, a world that cared for and cradled its inhabitants, a world that held no harm for its inhabitants. And it was into that world that the creator placed the apple of his eye the human race. That is the six day creation story. Now, I know it sounds like a fairy tale. I know it sounds that way to me as well. It sounds that way because you and I, we're very pragmatic people. We believe only that which we can see or hear or touch. And we have never seen nor heard nor touched a world that even remotely resembles the world that's described to us in the opening pages of the book of Genesis. It's for this reason that I believe a kind creator will have provided evidence that that world was real and that fairy tale creation story is actually the true history of our planet. Let's take a look at that six day creation story. The six day creation story goes like this. A kind creator made a pristine, innocent, beautiful, and benevolent world. A world that holds no harm for its inhabitants, but intentionally cradles and cares for its inhabitants. And he placed the apple of his eye, the human race, into that world. Now, the human race was at that time one man, one woman, and they were given one mandate. That mandate was to believe the words of their father when he said, if you eat from one particular tree, everything changes. As time went by, a talking serpent entered the garden. And the man and the woman began to doubt the words of their creator. When they finally ate from that tree, everything changed. Every molecule, every atom, every proton and neutron. Suddenly, the world that was programmed to protect and provide for its inhabitants was reprogrammed 
by a hostile intruder, to be at its best an uninvolved bystander, and at its worst a malevolent slumlord. The creator now converses with each of the three characters in this story. To each he reveals their future. To the woman he spoke of pain and suppression. To the man he spoke of struggle and hardship. To the serpent, well, let's go right to the scriptures to hear what he said to the serpent. From Genesis 3, 14, so the Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, cursed are you above all the livestock and all the wild animals. You will crawl on your belly, and you will eat dust all the days of your life. The word translated into English as serpent is the Hebrew word nokosh, N-A-W-K-A-W-S-H, nokosh. It most often refers to a snake, but it was used also to describe dragons. When Moses threw down his staff before Pharaoh, the staff became an animal which was called nokosh in one phrase, and then another phrase right thereafter, it was called tani, which is a word that is always translated dragon. Clearly. The Hebrew word nokosh had a broader meaning than simply a snake. It was more like our word reptile. Reptile is a class of animals which includes snakes, but it's not limited to snakes. So let's insert the English word reptile for the Hebrew word nokosh in Genesis 3 verse 14 and it reads like this. So. The Lord God said to the reptile, Because you have done this, cursed are you above all the livestock and all the wild animals. You will crawl on your belly, and you will eat dust all the days of your life. Remember that the words spoken to the man applied to all men, and the words spoken to the woman applied to all women. Likewise, the words that were spoken to the Nokosh applied to all reptiles. Now, what did the Creator say to the reptiles? He said they would crawl on their bellies and eat dust. Now what that means is that they would move about with their bodies in a prostrate position, their bellies to the ground, and their mouths suspended over the dust. Well, aren't all living reptiles belly walkers this way? moving along the ground with their bodies prostrate and their mouths suspended over the dust? Yes, of course. But what class of animals are the dinosaurs in? They are reptiles. Do dinosaurs crawl on their bellies? No. So then, what had to happen then to these non-belly walking reptiles like behemoth? Well, they had to die. The Creator's decree upon the reptiles required it of Behemoth and all the non-belly walking reptiles. You see, the Creator's decree upon the reptiles was essentially an announcement that the reptile family would be reduced to a family of belly walking creatures. Now from our 21st century frame of reference, we can see that the decree has been carried out to its completion. In order to accomplish this, the following species had to be driven into extinction. The four-legged dinosaurs with their bellies far above the ground, the two-legged bipedal dinosaurs, the flying reptiles called pterosaurs, and the ocean-dwelling reptiles that had neither the capacity nor the need to come on land. These four groups of reptiles are completely extinct. All that remains of this once vastly diversified biological class are animals that creep on land with their bellies to the ground and their mouths suspended over the dust. This is exactly what the Creator decreed. You know, it was no accident that these fossils have been preserved for our finding. 
it's ex it's precisely because the six day creation model seems so unrealistic and so fairy taleish that the creator buried evidence in the ground for our finding that this generation modern this modern generation with all of our knowledge and understanding of science we would dig into the ground and we would find evidence that that creation story that six day creation story is real the dinosaur fossils are the evidence that that six-day fairy tale creation story is real. There is a problem with our six-day creation story. You and I have to believe that at one time dinosaurs and men dwelt together. Now, if the evidence that we've already seen isn't enough for you, in our next video in this Signet Theory series, we're going to look at an incredibly vivid description of a dinosaur right from the scriptures. You don't want to miss this.